what's happening guys in this video let's talk about arrays now let's get started I have just created a new class called learning arrays uh, so what is an array an array is a continuous representation of same elements in the moment in the memory what do I mean by that okay so let me give you this context let us just say there is a, 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 a college a university of some sort that contains 2000 students enrolled in a math program now if I want to store their numbers you know I if I want to store their scores what is my best bet I can I can do something like this int std1 student1 is 56 uh, student2 std2 is 45 right uh, std3 is 76 so on and so forth but the problem is by the time I finish uh, from you know 1 to 2000 I would have already lost my mind I would have you know like it, it would be the next day right you know it, it would be night and then you wouldn't have had any food and then you have to have you have to have a lot of trouble and then next day tomorrow your eyes are all red <laughs> you know all those sort of things can happen so um, then what is an elegant way? An elegant way would be what is called as an array. Okay, so let me explain what this array is. An array is a continuous representation of same elements in the memory. So uh, let's let's try to understand. To overcome that problem that I mentioned, I can say something like this: int student math score is oh before I do anything you know what I'll do PSOEM which stands for public static void main and then I'll put that inside this so by you know usually when you want to run something you have to put everything inside a uh, public static void main that is when you can run something I hope you know that so and, and if you're trying to create a class, then you don't have to put it in PSVM, but uh, generally things like arrays or something that is very uh, primitive data type, then it's, it's a good idea because that's where your program is going to run. So that's where you have to put your stuff into. Anyway, so int student match score is a new int, okay, of now you say how many elements you want. So I just said about 2,000 students, right? 2,000, that's it. So this is going to create an array that contains 2,000 math score elements. Oh, and I should do one important thing that I forgot. Yeah, so I should add a pair of square brackets to my left just as soon as I declare the data type, which is an integer here. All right, so now this is an array that contains 2000 and for the sake of our easy understanding what I will do is I limit uh, the students to let us say mm, you know let's just say you started a small university and then it's uh, containing about five students that's it so five math major students now how do we uh, add scores to these students well you can do something like this you can do something such as student match score of two of one equals 45. Let's say the top score is 100. So then for two, it is 49. What does this bracket inside mean? What is this bracket mean actually? Student match score of one, student match score of two. It basically means that, you know, it means that so any element uh, internally this is how it would look like uh, I'm very sorry I cannot draw a shape here I wish I could so basically index this is called as an index uh, real quick so this is called as an index and index usually starts with zero in Java index starts with zero 44 
Okay, so index 0 means the first element, index 1 means the second element, index 2 means the third element, and so on and so forth. So what is the last element then? The last element would be student max score of 4. Okay, let's just say, let's say student max score of 5. Uh, the last element would be 4, okay? 98 student match score of 4 is 98 student match score of 3 is 65 I don't know so something like this so right now if, if we count 1 2 3 4 5 so we have 5 records which is what we accounted here for we said look compiler I need an array called student match score that has 5 elements capacity that is what it means. Got it? Now this can really quick, if I just make this as 2000, like I said, if, if it's a massive university, this can really become a big hassle because you know, 2000 entries is a mess. Then there should be some kind of a way for us to feed in the data, right? And by the way, before we do anything, let me show you something. Let me do S out student match score of zero. Now what happens if I right click and run, what could you expect? 44, why? Because we have declared it as 44 and then we are asking student match score of zero to be displayed. What if I do student match score of four? 98, which is what we expected, right? And, and, and just for the sake of clarity, let me do the second one. Um, if I do student match score of two, that's 49. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a simple thing that we have to realize that, you know, if we do 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, whatever that we give is what is going to be displayed here. And, you know, um, let, me, let me go to the ground practicality of what is happening right now. And if I, and for the sake of understanding, let me just say student match score and run it. So it's just going to print out some gibberish text, which you don't even know what is this, uh, which, you know, we'll be discussing it later. Okay. Um, at this point, you just have to uh, realize that if you want some element to be accessed, you should specify an index and that index should not exceed the maximum value. So the maximum value is four. And if I try to print 15, let's see what happens index out of bounds. That is the uh, thing Java says, you know, what is Java telling here? Java is telling, Hey, whoever you, whoever you're operating me, you better please be uh, careful enough to not go beyond the uh, bounds. My bound is just five and you're trying to access 15, which is ridiculous on your part. You know, that's what Java is, is, is holding you. So, um, <laughs> you have to uh, make sure that Java, is staying intact with uh, whatever we want it to be. Uh, if we do this again, that displays the array, right? So it's it's a basic, simple introduction to array. But like I said, if it was supposed to be 200, I mean 2000, this thing will become really bad. We're really nasty in a small amount of time. So how can we overcome that? The way we overcome that is by using the for loop. So I'll do something like this for int i equals zero. Okay. I less than student math score dot size. Okay. Let me just do something like this. What is the maximum size that we said? Maximum size is phi i less than phi and i plus plus. If we do something like this, a for loop, a for loop is I hope you know already, uh, a for loop is used for iteration and it's very similar if you're coming from C or C++ background. And let me open braces. All right, so uh, let me just clear this thing out. Now I'll say student math score of I is equal to I. Just for the sake of easy understanding, 
this is what I'm going to do. Student math score of i, that means the index i is equal to the value i. Let us, let, let's try and understand what's happening here. Uh, let's just look at this now. So, um, let's say the iteration is at zero, okay? If the value of i is zero, then what happens? This is what is going to happen. Student, uh, you know, so student math score of i would become something like this. Student math score of zero is going to become zero. Okay, in the next run, what happens is, okay, the iterator goes here. I mean, uh, the count of i is going to get updated. So this part is called as initialization. This is the condition, this is the updation, right? So as soon as you execute something inside here, it is going to get updated. So the update value is going to be i++, which means we are telling, hey, i, please become zero plus one. Now in this case, for the second run, i value is one. So currently i value is one, then student math score of i now becomes student math score of one, that is going to become one, right? As soon as this line of code is, is executed, this line of updation code is executed, which is now telling i update by one. So finally i value is now two, right? Finally, I value now is going to be two. So I is two. And then student math score of two is going to become two, right? Now, again, updation happens. It is going to be three and so on and so forth until let us say the value now becomes four here. Now what happens when the value is four? Basically student math score of four is there, right? So now student math score of four is becoming four. And then finally, student math score of four is there. And then here, let us see, I value now becomes three plus one, right? Actually four plus one, I'm sorry, four plus one, right? The current value of I was four here. So when we run this I plus plus, it's going to be four plus one, which is going to be five, correct? Now I value becomes five. Now it will check for the condition. Is phi less than phi? Yes or no? No. Is phi is not less than phi? Absolutely. Phi is equal to phi. Since this condition does not match, since this condition is not accepted in the for loop, now the for loop says get lost of my get lost of my loop. I mean get out of my loop and get to the next line of execution, which is this line. So let us now say let us now uh, type a line that says something like this s out student math score s out uh, let me do something kind of similar to what we did previously let me create another for loop for loop int i is equal to zero i less than less than phi i plus plus okay now if we say math student math score of i what do you expect out of this let me get rid of the these comments now what can you expect guys come on here we set the value for math student math score here we are trying to get the value and for every time the same thing repeats. So current iteration value i equals zero. So it's going to say student math score of zero, which is going to print out whatever was told during the setting value. So let's just try and run. Can you guess what's going to print out? Come on. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see. Aha. We have one, two, three, four, five, five elements, which is going to print zero, one, two, three, four. That's it for now. Uh, you know, let's talk about arrays in the next video. So this is the very basic introduction to arrays and uh, check your uh, description because you know, I would link this uh, source code as well. In the next video, we'll talk about uh, things like arrays length, arrays, uh, you know, many other functions that are pertaining to arrays. That's it. Thank you.